Welcome once again back to Lexington. Here we are on April 19th, which they used to call Patriots Day, and hopefully we have true Patriots in front of you. Hello, Sheriff Mack. Well, hi. Daniel Hapney with The Real Story. Daniel, thanks for being here. And uh, Man, it's a beautiful day in Lexington, and uh, you can really feel the spirit of freedom here. I, I love it. My first time ever here, and uh, what a great place to stand. Uh, the same place Minutemen stood uh, 230 years ago, and uh, it's this is just an amazing, amazing feeling. It's one of the better things in the Bay State. As a person who resides in Massachusetts, you're right. It's good to be in the place where, you know, where liberty was birthed, when I say birth. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, what brought you here. Tell us a little bit about the Oath Keepers. Well, uh, the Oath Keepers and I were a, a, a marriage that was uh, made in heaven. <laughs> it was easy. Uh, in my book, I talk about the Oath of Office, and uh, I have been talking about the Oath of Office for the last 15 years. Uh, when I wrote the book, uh, The Proper Role of Law Enforcement, uh, that's what I said. That's what I based the proper role of law enforcement on. Keep your oath. If you take an oath, if you swear, raise your right hand and swear an oath, then keep it. And, and uh, your word is who you are. And no matter who tells you to violate uh, the Constitution or your oath, you tell them no. I don't care if it's your sheriff, your sergeant, or the United States Supreme Court or your mother, or the barber down on Main Street. You tell them you will keep your oath, and you keep it. And that way, the people of this country know that uh, the peace officers and military of this country have the integrity that the Founding Fathers depended on. They, they asked us to take this oath. In fact, it's required in the Constitution exactly. itself. The oath of office is required by the Constitution. If you don't keep your oath, you're violating the Constitution. It's interesting, the, the way you just described that, I think of um, at least my upbringing with my father. And my father would say, I'd say, well, gee, Dad, I'd, you know, I'd like you to co-sign a loan so I could have credit. My father would say, son, a banker does not give you credit. Credit has to do with character, yes. about who the person is. When you walk yeah. into that bank, you bring credit. Yeah. And it's the same, once again, character, as you were saying. If you, you know, for the people, you know, years ago, and you think of the Founding Fathers, who turned around and said, you know, this is something that should be required. People should take an oath, yeah. okay, to protect, defend, and uphold the Constitution. Yeah. And you're right. Many times people, well, we can side skirt it this time. We can get around it that time. Yeah. And what, at least for the viewers and stuff, I think, you know, you've said it well to them that, you know, it is. It's part of a, um, to me, a man's character or whatever. Yeah. And it's more important uh, who the person is. Okay, then just because uh, many times they give people titles and all of a sudden, you know, everybody's, you know, your honor, your holiness, whatever, and all this stuff. Right. And it's, it's based on respect based on titles instead of respect based on the person. Right. Let alone if the person took the oath and stuff, then, you know, uh, I don't, I'm trying to find a good way to say it. Once again, it's got to do with character and moral character. Right. And it sounds like, you know, people that do respect their oath, I mean, if they don't, then they shouldn't take it. Yeah. You know, and protecting and defending the Constitution, the viewers may or may not even realize that's the not the only thing they've got. They are the ones who should be defending it. The people who view this on the other end, it's their job. It's not your job, it's not my job and stuff. It's their job and it's for their children. Right. You know? It, it'll benefit everybody's children, but yeah, it's for the viewers' children, not, you know. Well, like you say, whose job is it? You know, that's a, that's a real important question. Whose job is it to stand against tyranny? The tyrants? Washington, D.C. is not going to stop the problems they have caused, okay? Washington, D.C. is not going to all of a sudden be on Washington, D.C. That's not going to happen. So who does it? State and local authorities tell the federal government back off. In this state, in this county, we keep our oath and we will uphold and defend, protect and preserve the United States Constitution. Excellent. And the other thing I try to remind the viewers, and this, you know, I throw in everyone, I'm like, it was the states that created the federal government, not the other way around. Correct. And for the states to have their sovereignty, it's like you and I standing here, we're sovereigns. Right. A lot of people, uh, it's hard for them to conceptualize that to where they think, what, someone else is a king and now I've got to yeah. bow to said king or whatever the case. Here in America, part of what our founding fathers, you know, bequeathed us or gave to us and gave their blood so that we could have, and that is so that we could be sovereigns. Yeah. You know? Uh, there, there's a king, but he's not here right now. Uh, the good Lord uh, is the one that gave us this country, uh, and he's the only king. Uh, and after that, uh, we're sovereign. Uh, sure. Plain and simply. And in Washington, D.C., you might want to look that word up. Google sovereign for me, and then you'll know what sovereign means. It means we don't answer to you. Okay? And the Tenth Amendment, which was the basis of my case, is the Founding Fathers telling the federal government, in case we forgot something, 
you can't do that either. <laughs> exactly, yeah. A lot of people think that, you know, once again, not think, but, you know, a lot of them are conditioned over years of whether it's education or the media that um, the Constitution limits the people. <laughs> it's because none of them read it. It limits the government. It says, yeah. hey, the, this is what you can do. Yeah. And like you said, in the 10th, anything that hasn't been given to you as power, right. you don't have. Right. And you can't have. And you, you can't, can't have it. it from eminent domain just saying, hey, we slammed down a stamp or something. It's ours now. Yeah. And I still am looking for where the uh, federal government, government got any authorization by the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, founding fathers, to regulate all our rights. <laughs> Since when do they get to regulate... Uh, the Bill of Rights. Yet they have taken it upon themselves to do just that, especially when it comes to the Second Amendment. They don't get to do that either. And, and, and for anybody to think that the federal government gets to say how or when or what or, or put all the conditions on our rights is the same as destroying our rights. And that's what they're doing. And, and, and good news, it's bipartisan. Yeah. yeah, it's American. The destruction I, yeah. of our Constitution is entirely bipartisan. Both the Democrats and Republicans are equally responsible for the degradation of our Constitution. So at least they got that part right. It's bipartisan. The other thing that's good, here we are in Lexington, on Lexington Green, and this is where the, um, in this case, his royal eminence or whatever, the king sent his troops, right? Was, I think Gage was the general at the time, and they were going to what? They were going to confiscate the citizens' ability to defend themselves. Yeah, they were going to confiscate does. It gives, a local arsenal. Yeah it, gives, yeah, it gives those viewers, if they happen to have a gun, it gives them the ability to defend themselves. I don't know if you've been around here yet, but there's a, a statue of a Minuteman over there. And I don't want to shock anybody. <laughs> And I'm sorry I'm not politically correct, but he's not either. He's carrying an assault rifle. Oh, I'll be damned. You know, and just like King George III asked these colonists, says, what on earth do you need an assault rifle for? Well, you know, the same question can be applied today. Washington, D.C. keeps asking us, why do you need that? And you know what the answer is? It's none of your damn business. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. I'm a free American. I'll have one if I want to. It's called American citizen, sovereign. Sorry. That's why people. That's why people come here because we had that. We had that freedom. And once again, the individual being a sovereign, Sheriff yeah. Mack. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate you coming today. All right. You know, See and you welcome then. to Lexington. Oh, did you get the book? Hey, hold it. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you.